next, uh, the next uh, discussion here, and um, let me just start off by introducing myself and some of the folks that are, are joining us today. Uh, Carlos Montalvo, uh, Vice President of uh, Product Experience uh, at HP. And uh, for those of you that saw the abstract that we put together, this is intended to be uh, a session of uh, vigorous discourse, uh, dialogue, uh, disagreement, um, and uh, this is the first one that we actually get audience participation, right? So uh, at some point, um, uh, at any point actually, we uh, invite you to challenge, uh, to participate, or uh, just get up and get another Coke and, and wait for Phil McKinney to show up. <laughs> um, so the abstract at a very high level is, um, you know, connected entertainment. Um, how far the promised land? Uh, this is probably the, uh, at least the sixth CES where convergence, connected entertainment, uh, uh, persistence, ubiquity, uh, all of those, uh, has anyone scored bingo yet on their, on their buzzword bingo? <laughs> um, has been kind of throw, thrown at the space of um, the digital home, connected entertainment, and the fact that uh, increasingly, whether you're coming at um, this space from a, from a gizmo, from a service, from a retail, from a community, um, people are starting to, to move into a space where they want to be connected to their content, they want to personalize it, share it, and uh, without bumping into a walled garden, having to run through a hedge, or, uh, or get stuck in, uh, in a very limited uh, 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 playground. So what we try to do for this discussion is actually bring uh, people that have been looking at uh, this space, contributing to the dialogue, and from very, very unique set of uh, perspectives. So what I'd like to do is just do a quick introduction and also please feel free to, to, uh, uh, to add if, if I leave anything out. But we have Ross Rubin here from, uh, from MPD. And MPD is probably one of the top research firms um, that is tracking um, you know, what ultimately, no matter whether it's a service, a gadget, or a promise, it has to live in retail. The consumers have to understand it. And in every week, you can track it. Uh, is it moving or is it not? Are they reordering? Um, we have Terry Walsh here, and Terry Walsh uh, is from the UK, probably has one of the most important sites in the area of uh, community sharing, wegotserve.com, um, broad community, and uh, basically that's been tracking the emergence of the home server, media hub, media server market, and uh, he's here with us today. Uh, Wilson uh, Rothman, um, who is the features editor at, uh, at Gizmodo and, uh, and ultimately uh, continues to challenge the industry, continues to obviously challenge HP uh, as we look at uh, what are, uh, you know, how are, uh, how do business participate, uh, how do early adopters, influencers uh, participate, and, uh, and again, uh, one of the top, uh, top sites uh, in the blogosphere. Uh, Will Smith, who uh, uh, has been uh, editor-in-chief of uh, Maximum PC and MaximumPC.com, um, his community has been uh, tracking extreme computing, including gaming, and uh, uh, a huge enthusiast community that is now starting to move into um, the connected entertainment space and uh, uh, in the home. And finally, Richard Doherty, uh, who is a Research director at uh, at Envisioneering, and uh, in his ca in capacity of Envisioneering in terms of doing market research, market assessment, um, has probably seen every consortium, every every standards body, uh, whether it uh, succeeded, failed, or just flamed out at the launch pad uh, uh, before the first press release, has participated, has challenged, and uh, continues to look uh, at the industry very very broadly. So, uh, with that, gentlemen, did I leave anything out? Okay. I don't think so. Other than hi. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> hi. Hi. Good. Well. And uh, I, I'm just getting the signal that the cameras weren't, weren't running, so we'll have to do that all over again. <laughs> all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, the other thing that we had in the, in the abstract <laughs> is um, uh, at the end of this, we want to give uh, uh, the industry a report card. And uh, so, um, but the class hasn't started yet. We haven't had the, the dialogue yet. So, I think a good place to start is. I think all of you were here in uh, uh, last year's CES. As it relates to uh, connected entertainment, the, the uh, evolution of the digital home, 
uh, from your respective communities, uh, what grade did you uh, did you give CES and the participants? Starting uh, starting here with Ross. Well, you know, I think overall you have to give an, an incomplete. Uh, but uh, but I, I think we have seen some progress between last year and, and this year, maybe uh, uh, moving from about a C minus to a to a C um, this year. Uh, you know, last year in, in the home we saw a few big electronics companies experiment with connectivity in the TV. Certainly, we've had a lot of point products uh, over the years, uh, like Apple TV and and. You know the boxes that Netgear and others have done to try to facilitate content moving around the home. Been interesting products. Uh, some have been well implemented. Some haven't been so engaging. Uh, but regardless, it's been uh, it's been a tough sell uh, to get those products into consumers' homes, by and large. <coughs> um, so uh, it's definitely refreshing that companies like Sony and Samsung and HP and uh, uh, and, and the other large CE companies are. Uh, are, are starting to experiment with this. They're seeing some value in it. A lot of it is driven by, you know, uh, the evolution of the flat panel TV, and the and, and the picture quality enhancements that they keep making are yielding more and more marginal returns. You know, going from 60 hertz to 120 hertz, 240 hertz. You know, it, it's getting past sort of the point where a lot of consumers can either perceive it or, or care about it. So they need to show some other way to bring value to the television. Uh, and, uh, and this is one way to do it. Um, it may not be super compelling right now. They certainly don't know how to make money off it just yet. Uh, but, uh, but at least it's something different, uh, at least until we all put on the dorky glasses to uh, watch everything in 3D. So. <laughs> uh, um, for me, a very similar kind of score. So uh, I, I, I came to CES last year, I guess almost with, with, with a pair of you know, consumer glasses on and, and lured by the promise of this fantastic vision of connected entertainment and kind of uh, it's one of those things that I guess last year when you actually lifted up the hood and you saw the solutions that were in place from a lot of the suppliers out there boy was it a mess and, and certainly one of the, the, the kind of big areas of growth you know for us in terms of we got served has been around just helping people out there make sense of what all this stuff is how it all works together um, and, and for me this year I think uh, I've been quite quite enthusiastic this year to actually see um, the theme of simplicity start to come through to, to some of these devices. So um, ensuring devices work well together, ensuring they're easy to set up, ensuring they're rewarding to use, and ensuring that you can actually focus on the content, the kind of stuff that you own that's important to you, rather than getting out a 65 page manual and trying to work out how it all works. So, uh, so some improvement, but I think some way to go. So incomplete? C minus. C minus? C minus. Yeah, the top. Okay. I'll, I'll go with the C, um, you know, a bit of a great inflator, but, uh, <laughs> but the fact is the, uh, what, I feel like there was a case in a lot of ways of, of trying to, to run before you can walk, or maybe even trying to fly before you can crawl, I mean, it was, uh, what you, what you you're saw. You're using that metaphor because you have a new child, right? Oh, maybe. <laughs> um, what, what, what kid, kid metaphors all after you now. That's right. Beware. Um, no, I, I, what, what we saw originally, like going back several years and even up through last year, the idea that there's a box here and a box here and there's this over here and you got stuff here and you're going to get all this going on. And this year has actually been what I think is a paradigm shift where connected finally just means this thing talks to the internet or this thing just plugs in. Um, we'd like to see more wireless, but this thing plugs into your router and and it does something. It's connected. So it doesn't seem like, the industry, if, that, if I were to be a provocateur here, it's not that the class got smarter, it's that the professor lowered the bar. <laughs> so, <laughs> so if you say you're connected, you pass. Right, why'd they give them like BC calc before they gave them AB calc? Like this, why didn't they, why didn't we start with just some sort of internet-based home electronics instead <coughs> of trying to tie it all together? Which, I mean, Terry, that's his job is helping people figure this out. And it's, yeah. It's a mess. It is, it's a mess. The standards have been there for a long time. I mean, UPnP has been around for years. DLNA has been around for, what, two years now? Yeah. Uh, uh, five. Five. <laughs> <laughs> You're the expert on the, yeah. the standards, yeah. right? But only two that were started. But I mean, I've only seen products for yeah. two. I'm, I'm a product guy. Um, I mean, the, the thing that's changed is, is that before my guys, the fringe guys, were ripping DVDs and putting them on a, on a server and then using Tversity or some sort of, some sort of kind of 
kludge together combination of a DLNA or UPnP media server to put stuff out on their Xboxes or on popcorn hours or, or whatever the device happens to be, um, that's still not easy to do, right? Like last year would have been, I would have said D plus maybe at, at best, because you know we had two competing, well, for part of CES, we had two competing high def disk formats. You could only rip, you couldn't rip either of them. You couldn't take you couldn't take them out of the, take the content out of that walled garden, and, and and you know that that not thanks to the CE industry, but thanks to the you know the guys working in their basements has changed. I mean, you can rip Blu-ray discs and you can make movies that you can do whatever you want with at that point. You can rip DVDs. It's easier than ever. I mean, my mom's not doing it, but my wife might. Um, I mean, in that regard. My my guys, my community is much happier than they have been in the last the last six seven years, and they're actually seeing the promise of you know they have servers in their home that are streaming to Xboxes, PS3s, PSPs, any number of, of you know devices that, that that they own, and they can they they're able to make that stuff work. I, I completely agree. I mean, who are the biggest consumers? Uh, who are the biggest uh, innovators at CES last year? Consumers, because they have to get this stuff to work. Right. It's actually right. them <laughs> innovating rather than the C industry. industry. They voted with their dollars. Yeah. Right. yeah. And they, or, or their feet, as the case may be. Right. Yeah. And, and they, I mean, it's, it's, it's hacker-based. I mean, it's not necessarily always pirate-based, but it's always based on someone who can kludge things together. I mean... Right, who, who went out and read patent applications for the MT2S transport format <laughs> right. to figure out how to take... Once the guys in, in Aruba had unencrypted the, the Blu-ray right. discs, right. they went through and, and reverse engineered yeah. this format and then pulled the, the H.264 video out of it. Yeah. And, and from, once you have the video and the audio out, it's just a simple transcoding job that anything can do. Yeah. Enrique, what about you? Oh, it's, oh, wait, I didn't it's get a great out of that, Will. Oh, uh, D minus last yeah, year. D minus. Yeah. Oh, sorry, D plus. D plus. Okay. I'm optimistic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can share a grade and give some detail for four or five reasons why. But Ross is right that there's a big incomplete. Because a year ago, you had uh, this thing called AACS that already was more than a year old. <coughs> point not, point 0.85, point 0.9. It's still not 1.0. And that was supposed to give us managed copy and all these freedoms for. DVDs and HD DVDs and Blu-ray, and it's still incomplete. We came into the show when you had uh, Netflix right before the CES. Said, we're going to start streaming stuff. We're going to send the PCs to consumer devices. And a lot of eyes with them said, wow, uh, Hollywood didn't pass th thumbs up or thumbs down. This sounds good. And that was good. Uh, the uh, uh, HP Home Server came out. The idea that I can really start putting all this content there. I don't have to play NAS games anymore. Uh, so those were positive. That would have brought this up from the F to the D so that's about where I got, yeah. 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 Uh, that, at the same token, you still had so many people in the content industry coming to the CES acting as if, of course you can enjoy our content, so long as you drag all these chains with you, as long as you put a drop of blood in here, and prove we are three times during the movie, of course you can enjoy our content. For you. And decoder. It, it's your problem yeah. to enjoy our content. Right, yeah. right. right. Yeah. Of course you can enjoy it. Just, just do it our way. And, and fortunately, uh, we're going to talk about now with the big changes this past year, a lot of the content guys have uh, uh, have seen the light, and once the HD DVD Blu-ray battle was resolved with Blu-ray and DVD and streaming and download, they said, "Okay, that game's over. Uh, which which consumers do we listen to? Which platforms have you guys been delivering for? How long that we can actually now address instead of hate?" And and so in that sense, that brought this up to a D minus from what was hovering near an F. So uh, as you can see, we've got a tough crowd here. We're, we're, we're definitely functioning at the university level. So just because you got out of high school doesn't mean you can move forward. Um, so uh, I'm going to take actually a station break uh, because now is a word from our sponsor. I heard home server. And, uh, uh, and uh, as a uh, godfather of the yeah. Media Smart Home Server, um, uh, I'd like to say, I would like to congratulate the home server team for actually getting best of show at, uh, at Macro. So we made the, the conscious uh, decision to introduce the Media Smart Home Server 2.0 at Macro, and we got word yesterday that uh, we got best of show. Um, why is that lot, important? It'll, because it'll be the last best of show. I know, but that's the one that gets remembered, right? right. Is the one yeah. the, uh, um, and, uh, and this also transitions into our first uh, uh, audience interaction mode. So you've seen the grades here. Does, how many people in the audience uh, would give the industry um, a better grade than what we've seen here in terms of delivering on the promise of connected entertainment? Do I see a B minus in the room from the perspective of, of uh, or C, your or even C plus. Do I see a C plus? Do, do I see agreement with C plus? Okay, shout it out. Where are we? Anyone? It's like some one person did their homework assignment and did, you know, talking about A complete? I think they did one homework assignment. <laughs> one lab. 
I would say it might be in the in the uh, sea, you know, the sea area for people in the United States, Canada, Europe, everywhere else in the world. It's a pretty solid F. Yeah, you know, when I look at my Xbox and I look at the, you know, I, I mm -hmm. think I have 500 movies now, and if I was living in the U.S., I might have, you know, like over a thousand or something. Yeah. And there's no TV shows, and so. Uh, primary markets, maybe a C, but I think all the secondary markets in the world are... Uh, well, I was going to yeah. ask, uh, what, what about maybe Japan might even be actually a little higher than the U.S. because they, they do have Blu-ray recorders mm -hmm. and they, you know, they are recording their content and, you know, have, have a little more flexibility. Right. But recording yeah. into a walled garden, I mean, it's still an encrypted Blu-ray disc, so, yeah. you know, you're not getting anything that you can um, use. Better high-def recording I, than I guess that's I have access to. That's that's more high-def content to either record. That's true, too. Beyond the, beyond the alphabetic grades, you know, I think, you know, when you, uh, you got your report cards, the, the teachers made comments. I think the, the comment would be, does not work well with others. Very <laughs> 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 true. Well put. A round of snaps on that. Now, now, wait a second. So every time the audience talks, the camera seems to keep pointing here. So, that's <laughs> what you guys, uh, that's a that. so we've got to focus, is what you're saying. Don't yeah, focus. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so let me start taking it a little bit uh, farther afield here. Um, obviously, would you, would the panel agree that there are more devices, more business models, more end-to-end -end service stacks, uh, more standards, standards bodies, participating in um, in the area of digital entertainment, at least if you were to search all of the all of the press releases and uh, put in <coughs> convergence plus digital entertainment, I think the number would go up this year. But just because more people are participating, is the industry actually converging or well, diverging uh, no, or just fragmenting? No, I mean, it's a disaster, right? I have, in my entertainment center, I have four or five devices that I can watch paid download content on. I have a Series 3 Tivo, I have an Xbox, I have a PS3, I have an Apple TV. Is there anything else? Oh, well, Netflix to, to the Xbox, or, or the Tivo, for that matter. So there's that's five places. I, mean, I want to watch a movie. Is it available for rental on Amazon? No. Is it available for rental on Apple? Is it available? Oh, I can purchase it from Apple, but I can't purchase it from Amazon. It's not on Netflix. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, it's extraordinarily frustrating. Well, I would say retailers really took the lead in the sense that, uh, like Amazon, with the with Kindle, I'm sure we're going to see it in other media as well. Uh, if I lose the Kindle, that's run over by a truck or something, I can still get that ebook again. It goes to me. That doesn't care what some 838 digit number comes back to me. I'm going to pay for it 10 times over. And, and we've seen, uh, you know, knock wood, the best thing that's happened last year is DRM is almost all gone from music. And that was unthinkable to some lawyers about 18 right. months ago. But right. if we start seeing those, those inroads come with, uh, with video, they produce some of the clutter you got in that, in that rack there. And I'm going, well, I can only get this one here, I can only get that one there. Um, so in a sense, that and Best Buy the, would kick back the manufacturers, <coughs> not off on HP that I've heard, but would kick back and say, hey, you, your toys don't play well together. So, so they become kind of this, this consumer focus. And Dillard's and uh, Catawa and Berlin, all, all these stores of, of, of some of the manufacturers, I don't care what Tesh you did internally, we're talking to the consumers here. We don't like to take products back. And I think right. this last year, year and a half, has seen a, a real uptick in that and getting word back to the manufacturers saying, don't do this to us again. You want the customers, we're your channel with the customers, listen to us. So that's gotten better. You know, Rick, you mentioned that the Kindle being a good example of, you know, d downloading, um, you know, lose the Kindle, you can still get the content. But that's, I mean, I've obviously, you realize that's because of an impressively lengthy legal agreement that shows you don't actually own the book at all, but you're just... Oh, it's ugly. You don't want to see yeah, yeah, the sausage factory. Yeah. It's, it's ugly in there. And what, what's interesting, and, and just to further the point, I think that this indicates <coughs> that for every medium there's slightly, there are different usage, yeah, usages of DRM and of content protection, whereas uh, I mentioned this earlier, and it may sound bad, but I'm actually a big fan of the Blu-ray plus the managed copy. Right. You rip because it may not give me 100% of everything I, you know, I would like to do with the movie. It actually gets me about 70% of the way. I can watch it on my big TV. I can watch it on either an Apple-approved device or a Microsoft. But the or is the problem. Yeah. I mean, my wife has a has a, has a yeah. Windows Mobile phone. I have an iPhone. Thank you. So yeah. we have to make the choice. <laughs> that, I mean, do I get the content yeah. or does she? I mean, it's, sometimes it's easy. She's not going to watch The Dark Knight four times, but I will. <laughs> I don't know. But you know, it's a good movie. It's pretty good. Yeah.